Okay. Now let's build our surface. That is our construction surface. So to do that, and we're going to go out here and I'll first just simply select um, all my elements. And I'll come in, create surface. I want to set this to none, no feature. And let's just turn this, change this color around a little bit so it's not offensive. And we want to make these break lines. So there's my construction surface. And if I turn on my reference, um, I'll see my surface. Now I want to make sure my construction surface is big enough that I can drape the perimeter of the parking lot onto it. Okay, so um, with that, uh, let's just do a couple things here. Let's go back here to this view, this window, and let's turn off our image. Let's pop U8 so we have a true 2D, 3D managed view going. And then let's just undo the display of the reference profile from surface. And let's do that again. Select each of these elements. And we'll come out here and select the terrain model. We want all profile adjustment, none, draping option, triangles, horizontal offset, zero, vertical, zero. And if we look closely, we'll see the elements for the parking lot. Now we can create that terrain. So when we create the terrain for the parking lot, I want to set it to contours. And now I want to select the elements that are the boundary, reset, and I'll change that to boundary none. And now I see a contour. And then I want to grab these islands. So what we'll do is we'll use the terrain model add. You see when I select it in the 3D view, I'm selecting the contour and then reading the prompt where it says terrain model parking. So I'm making sure I identify the right element. Now I'm going to locate my three islands. Reset. And these will add as a, a break void or a hole. Either would work just as well. And so now, um, if I were to come in here in my 3D view and first turn off the triangles on my construction surface and turn on the triangles on my parking surface, I'll now see my parking lot taking shape. Um, there are some other elements I need to add. One would be the break line. And we'll set that to a soft break. And next I want to add the center line, but I don't want the whole thing because it extends beyond the parking lot. So what we'll use is the 3D geometry, additional 3D by plan element. Now for this I need to turn on um, my display in view one. And I'll locate my plan element. I'll select the starting point. And I'll come down here and I'll select an ending point. And then I'll reset for the active profile. And now if I carefully, it's a little tricky to find, but if I just select on that element, I can see the shortened element 
and I can say I want to add that to the terrain model as a soft break line. And again, um, if I were to choose a style or a feature style rather that had the triangles on all the time, um, this is what we would see. Okay, so with that, uh, what I may want to do is use an applied surface template. And I'm going to use my pavement concrete with the aggregate subbase. So I'll locate my terrain model, no clip boundary, and data point. Okay, so now I have my components. Now the next step, and we'll look at this cell in a few in a, another session, but what we're going to use is a civil cell for the perimeter. And the civil cell for the perimeter that we're using um, is not a cell that uses a corridor. So uh, I've designed this cell to entirely be comprised of terrains. And it doesn't look like much, but what it is uh, is a curb and gutter, a sidewalk, and an end condition, or a three to one slope cut and fill. And the way we place it, uh, we need to first set a starting point. So maybe I want to start my cell at this point, go this way. And again, I want to turn that display off. So we need to first locate our reference element, locate the second, and Accept, and there's our cell. So what did we place? It doesn't look like much, not yet. Anyway, so we'll um, look at this. So what we place is a curb and gutter section with a sidewalk and a three to one cut and fill slope. And you may say, well, but it's only on uh, four foot of that element. And we'll just stretch that out. And I'm just trying to get the end distance only. Although with the end distance and offset, in this case, I can just snap it. And I'm in good shape. So some people may say, well, but Mike, what if my gutter is different? Uh, this cell was created with a 1.75 foot gutter. Uh, we could easily change that to two feet. Whatever it is, if our curb is a different width or if the face of the curb offset would be different, we could update that. If our sidewalk width is different, we could update that. Uh, or we could easily modify the cell to not have a sidewalk or to have a detached sidewalk and so on and so forth. So let's place one more of those around to the start. And again, we'll just go place, we'll select, and reverse it, accept it. And then again, we will highlight that cell And I'll drag that around. And you see how quickly that updated. Um, the speed is what I'm after, is why uh, I opt um, for this as opposed to um, using a corridor per se uh, in the cell itself. Plus, um, by using this, we actually have the terrain boundaries and so forth in place, and uh, we can do our cut and fill and whatever else we need. Um, now you see here, we have an outer terrain, and we have our terrain going around our parking lot. So um, next, we'll simply modify this cell, and we'll create our islands, and we'll fill in these 
islands here that are at the edge uh, as well. And we'll set that up. 